There's something about mini PCs that have always piqued my interest. Perhaps it's the modularity some come with and the plethora of features they pack inside in such a small form factor. Today we're taking a look at the Geekom Air 12 Lite mini PC. Will this small yet sufficient bit of kit satiate my desire for a minimalist look? Well, stick around to find out. If you enjoy this video or find it anyway informative, then a like and sub would be greatly appreciated. Now, let's delve into the mini PC monopoly and see if it's worth all the hype. You might be wondering, who is Geekom? Well, they're quite a big company based in Taiwan specializing in mini PCs. They've been around for more than 20 years, so I think they know a thing or two about the growing mini PC market. They offer budget mini PCs like this one and also this, but let's cast our eyes onto the budget side for today. The Air 12 Lite Mini features the Intel N100 CPU, which would hopefully be enough to power this mini machine. A 4 core 4 thread chip with a 6 watt TDP makes this ideal for something with a smaller heating solution. Out of the box, it comes with 8GB of DDR4 3200MHz. Ram and a 256 gigabyte PCIe Gen 3 SSD, which in fact can be upgraded, unlike some others. Anyways, let's unbox this up and see what it's all about. The Air 12 Lite came in a pretty compact box, which was a nice surprise. Peeling off the cellophane and slowly lifting the box, we get a first preview of what it looks like. In your hands, you do get a good feel of how small this PC really is. With it, you get a small card of appreciation, which is nice. Taking off the second layer, here are all the accessories included with the mini PC. You get your regional standard plug socket, a 65W AC adapter and a free HDMI cable. With it includes a bag of screws, presumably for the VESA bracket, instruction manual and yes, you do get a VESA bracket to attach this mini PC to the back of your monitor, which is a nice touch. Let's clear all that away and get a better look at the A12 Lite. Peeling off the protective paper, here's a proper glance of what this PC looks like. Again, I can't stress enough how small this thing really is, weighing only a kilogram and being 13.5 centimeters by 11.5 centimeters. The amount of engineering required to build something like this is quite impressive. Even with a small footprint, no compromise has been taken on the port selection. For front I.O., we get two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, a 9-pin expansion port for propriety devices and your microphone headphone jack. Turning it around, you get a DisplayPort connector, Gigabit Ethernet, two USB 2.0 and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and of course your HDMI and DC connector. Let's set this bad boy up and see what it's like to use a mini PC. Plugging all the necessary components together, let's set everything up and experience the first boot. So here is the first boot up of the Geekom Air 12 Lite mini PC. Let's see if it turns on. And there you go. Okay, so let's get this setup process done and dusted and take a deep dive into the Geekom mini PC and see what it's like. Ah, what a relief. You know, I always get that slight nerve-wracking feeling during the first boot, but alas, everything looks as expected. Let's just skip forward to when we're in Windows 11. And here we are. First thing I always do after a first boot is check Task Manager to see if the specs are as described. And by the looks of it, we're running the Intel N100, 8GB of RAM, a 256GB SSD and Wi-Fi 6E, which is great to see on a budget machine. Windows 11 does take a sizable chunk of the SSD, so I'd probably run a distro of Linux on here, which in return would yield a faster machine. Though on Windows, it's fast enough opening multiple apps and browsing through menus. I didn't experience any hiccups or lag when using the PC normally. Browsing the web was flawless, and viewing web pages yielded in an overall pleasant experience, which was great to see. I've seen computers bigger and more expensive not provide a smoother experience, so in that regard, I see the Air 12 Lite did pretty well. I ran a quick disk speed test and got a score of 561 read and 501 write, perfectly fine for most users, and miles ahead of something like a hard drive or eMMC storage. Running a quick Cinebench test yielded a score of 2,966 points, which is what I expected from this chip. Not the fastest, but you can't expect to run graphically or CPU heavy tasks on this. For the majority, this is sufficient. During all of this, the fan was barely audible. Take a listen. There are no dedicated graphics, so we're currently working with Intel UHD graphics, which was to be expected at this price range. On Valley Benchmark, we got a score of 533, an average FPS of 12.8. Let me stress, this is by no means a gaming PC, and I ran this test on high settings. Let's move on to some gaming. In Minecraft, I was actually pleasantly surprised. We got a pretty solid average of 130 FPS on medium settings, which I was not expecting. Maybe you can play some lighter titles on this, who knew? 
notice how much power the CPU is actually using. Quite exceptional really. I'd imagine if you bumped up the RAM to 16GB then you'd probably eliminate those 1% FPS stutters. So let's do that shall we? Time to disassemble. Here we have the Air 12 Lite as you'd expect, time to give it a RAM upgrade. For the size of this machine it's simply amazing how they didn't outright solder the RAM. I'm looking at you Apple. Unscrewing the back cover reveals the PC's internals, nicely set out. You got your single DIMM of RAM and M.2 SSD. Underneath the SSD you got the Wi-Fi module nicely tucked away. The SSD is fitted with a thick thermal pad which is always nice to see. Let's put all those parts back together as well as a 16GB stick of RAM. Screw it back together and boot it up a second time. In Task Manager, it thankfully does recognise the 16GB. Let's see if that makes any impact in Minecraft. Initially, I didn't notice much difference, but flying around did reveal less in the way of stutters, so I'll give it that. Personally, I would upgrade the RAM straight away, as 8GB is on the low side of things, so it's great to see how easily accessible it is to upgrade. Benchmarks aside, let's be a bit productive shall we? I'll be using both Photoshop and Premiere Pro to see how they fare on the Air 12 Lite. Starting off with Photoshop, I honestly have no complaints. Using multiple layers and filters didn't bother this mini machine at all, which was a surprise. So yeah, thumbs up for Photoshop. In Premiere Pro, I wanted to see how it can handle normal 1080p editing and rendering. With a 5 minute gaming clip, a few layers and colour adjustments, it did pretty well. Scribbling through the timeline was no issue and exploring different menus was as you'd expect and end different to what I'm used to on my main rig. Premiere Pro is notorious and I mean notorious for random lag spikes and crashes, however I'm pleased to say I did not experience that. And of course exporting the video went well taking around 45 minutes for a 5 minute 1080p video. Keep in mind we're relying on UHD graphics so these numbers are perfectly fine and as you'd expect. The Air 12 Lite is small enough but let's make it completely invisible. Will mounting the PC to the back of the monitor make a big difference? Of course, you can use your mini PC on the desk, but to achieve a minimalist look hiding those pesky cables, let's set it up attached to a monitor. What you need are the screws and vaser bracket. So let's start off by screwing down the standoffs to the Air 12 Lite, required to latch the PC to the bracket. With that completed, let's focus on the monitor. Turning it around, laying it flat on its front, it would help if you set a soft surface so you don't end up scratching your desk or monitor. Anyways, get those four screws and position the bracket to where the vaser threads are on your monitor. Make sure to check if your monitor supports 100 by 100 or 75 by 75 brackets, which most monitors do. Since mine is 100 by 100, I'll be using the four outer holes to screw it down. Once that's done, carefully position the standoffs into the socket and slide down to secure. Me being an idiot did it the wrong way, so make sure the back IO faces the bottom. And just like that, we're done. All that's left to do is plug in the ports and turn it on and I must say it instantly looks a whole lot better. You could say it looks like an all-in-one desktop. All the cables are out of sight and makes moving it around a whole lot easier. So what do you think about the Air 12 Lite? In my opinion, I think it's quite a nifty device for all things considered. Some of the standout features was how easily upgradable it is, the ability to mount it to a monitor as well as its overall performance and supporting two 4K displays. Quite the package and something I see myself using. Anyways, I guess I'll leave it here. If you're interested, check out the links down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, why not check out another? Be sure to like, share and subscribe for more future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.